Elijah Magnier is a military and political analyst. I started by asking him what Hezbollah might do next. The special forces have not been engaged in a battle from the day one. So for the last almost 12 months, the special forces are still waiting in their place. They have not been damaged. Only commanders that are immediately replaceable have been assassinated. Secondly, the naval force has not been touched, and the missile force has been uh, uh, hit, but only the warehouses that are above the ground. Anything that under the ground and the long-range missiles that are on the borders between Syria and Israel have not been destroyed. So because uh, Israel has violated the rule of the war that has been established in the last 11 months and start bombing the uh, Beirut, the capital, in its suburb, and then killing the commanders, including the Secretary General. That was a clear violation of the non-declared rule of engagement, and I think Hezbollah will do exactly the same by starting uh, retaliating against Israel without any rule. Um, earlier, the supreme leader of Iran says Nasrallah's death will not go unavenged. And how likely is it now that other regional actors may step in? Iran doesn't need to step in because uh, it uh, indicates any, any direct intervention will indicate the weakness of Hezbollah. And uh, the, I think Hezbollah has not started the war yet. Uh, only in the last two weeks, there were a series of events that indicated apparently that there is a large confusion and Hezbollah has been defeated. Even if the Israeli media is saying, well, Hezbollah has endorsed more than 10% of its capability, which is quite accurate, which means Hezbollah still has 90% to fight Israel with, which is quite a lot. Twelve nations are now calling for a 21-day ceasefire, including the U.S. So what can we conclude from Israel's refusal? And uh, how will Biden calling Hassan Nasrallah's death a measure of justice affect the U.S. efforts to de-escalate tensions between Israel and Hezbollah? We haven't seen any sign that match what the Americans are saying and what they are doing since the beginning of the war in Gaza. They said they want to stop the war, but they continue supplying Israel up to 50,000 tons of explosives. They've added the financial support to Israel. They refilled their interception missiles. There are 2,000 Delta forces in Israel, five to six uh, highly experienced generals, the intelligence um, uh, support that Israel is enjoying from being part of the U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, and the interception of all the missiles and drones that come from either Yemen or Iraq. The Americans are saying we don't want the Israeli to go to Rafah, and Israel went to Rafah. The Americans are saying we don't want another war and don't bomb Beirut. The Israelis bombed Beirut and killed commanders, and this is when everything started. The Americans said we don't know what's happening, but then they said, we have been informed, and it's good that Nusrallah was killed, and we're ready to defend Israel. So between the acts and the word, there is a huge difference.